I'm Sierra and I'm going to be going over using the Osmo on the Camera Lucida app today. First what you're going to do, open up the app and I already have the Osmo stand set up so if you're going to be doing this you have to have the Osmo stand and then you're going to open up an image that you would like to draw. And so for this one I'm actually going to be drawing one that I did in one of my first videos and I'm going to use it and show you different ways that you can have different effects on drawings and different techniques that you can use because it's not just tracing an image. You can have a lot of different artistic interpretations and different filters that you can use to get different techniques going on the paper. So I'll show you how to do some of that. So open up your, your photo or your picture that you're going to be drawing and select it. And this is my dog Merlin again, so say hello again. So what you're seeing right now is behind the camera. So actually what you want to do is you want to reverse the camera. So to do this, you're going to click on the top left corner. There is a little camera symbol. Click on that. And then you're going to want to hit front. And that is going to flip the camera. So if you're going to take a selfie of yourself, basically, uh, it's going to take the camera flipped around. So now what you're seeing is the Osmo at work. It's got a mirror that reflects it down onto the piece of paper below. But it is possibly going to be a little bit distorted just because it's the front camera and it's at an angle and it would be really elongated. So what you got to do is adjust those settings. So to do that, you go down and you see there are two lines right on the bottom. And you're able to adjust, actually, the angle of your paper or on the screen. So you can zoom out if you want to do that, so it'll be easier for you to tell if it's even. Or if you want to zoom in, you can do that as well, and you can see how I'm doing it with my, my fingers here. So let's get this even with the sides of the paper as best we can. So you might see some black lines on the sides, and don't worry about that. That is just the outreach of your camera, and it can't see past that. So that's just the black outside, the, the void of the camera that it can't see past. So don't worry about that. Just try and make it so you are seeing the paper properly. I like to put my hand in front of it, and if my fingers look too long or too squished, then I don't think it's quite right. So I'm going to work around with this a little bit, and then we'll have it set up, and I'll get back to you. Okay, we're back. So what I like to try and do is have the edge of the screen lined up with the edge of the paper. And if it's not weirdly angled in any way, then I think I've got it pretty even with what it's supposed to look like on the screen. So when you're done, don't forget to hit save. That's going to save your settings for the future and it's going to be really helpful because you're not going to have to do this again. So do that and then press the flashing camera button that you pressed before to open it up again. So now you're going to press that to close it and now you're ready to go. So I've got my dog picture right here and what you can do is you can adjust the size of your image. You can zoom in and out using two fingers. So if you want to make it really big, if you got high enough quality camera, you can do that. Or if you want to make it really tiny, I wouldn't recommend that, but you can still do that too. So you can do that and get it to a size that you like. If you want to rotate it all the way too, you can do that so it might fit your paper a little bit better. You can also press and hold on the image and then move it around and you'll be able to see the paper behind it so you know where you're positioning it. So now we come to this screen. And this screen is where you can adjust the opacity of the image over the paper behind it. Or in this case, in front of it. So that bar at the bottom, you can adjust and you can go all the way down to seeing nothing at all or go all the way up to seeing just the image. Now what you want is somewhere perfectly in between because that is going to be how you're able to see the image while you're drawing it. So I'm gonna put it about right here. But let's say that I don't wanna be doing the exact image that I see in front of me. Say I wanna do a little bit of artistic interpretation. So you've got filters here that are really handy for that. So go, you see that little box? It looks almost like a treasure chest box. Press that. And that is going to open up a ton of options for you to look through. Now keep in mind that all these options, when you use them together, they actually stack. So if you're going to put on, say, 64 colors, and then you wanted to go with posterize, now you have both of those on one image. At this point, it might be nice for you to, to raise that opacity up nice and high so you're able to see what these effects are doing to your image. So. Say you've been messing around, reset to the original. I'm going to show you a cool way to, to 
do some posterization. We're going to go to posterize. And here you're seeing in shades of gray. So if you had an image in color, it automatically makes it grayscale. And then you have the options of how many layers of gray that you want to have. So if you chose one or two, then you would only see the image in black and white, basically. But if you go somewhere in between, then you're going to be seeing all these different levels of gray color or lack of color. <laughs> so you have nine layers if you press on the nine. If you press on 16, then you have 16 layers to work with. Now this comes in handy if you're working with another effect that you can apply. So I'm going to choose six layers for now, and then we're going to press on the treasure chest button again. Now I'm going to go to levelize. So what you're seeing now is the darkest gray, or in this case black, that was in the image. If you put it to grayscale and then you make it black and white, this is the darkest color. But this is also really good for just understanding shading and understanding value in an image. So say you didn't quite like one, you thought it's a little bit too, uh, a little bit too hard to tell what it is. So you go to gray level two. So now this has taken out the darkest level, but it's gone to the second darkest level of gray. So now you can see the image a little bit differently. You're able to see all of these details, all these shades. Now if you go up another level, same deal, lighter, lighter image, you're able to see all the lighter grays, and it goes that way the further you go up until you get to six, which would be white. So if you're working on a gray or a blue or a different colored sheet of paper and you're working with charcoal or marker, then this is a really cool way to be able to get extreme values. But if you're working on a white piece of paper too, that works as well. So we are gonna draw this. However, say that you wanna record what you're drawing. You actually can do that in the app too. Look up in the top right corner, you see a record button. Don't press it yet though actually go to the bottom right where there's an arrow. And here you can adjust what you're recording because this will actually give you a time lapse option of how many pictures you want taken, how many seconds. And when you're done and you hit the record button again to stop it, then it's gonna automatically save it to your device. Now there are other options here too. The vertical slider is really handy if you want a side-by-side -side image of what you've drawn so far and what you're going to be drawing next. So if you press that one and then you tap away from the menu, make it go away and you see this vertical slider at the bottom of the screen. And if you pull it across, it's almost like erasing it on, on one of those toys you had as a kid where you would draw something, there's a slider on the bottom and it would just erase everything you had drawn on it. So, it hides it away. Look at what you've drawn, which right now is nothing, but we'll get there. And then, look, it's back. So it's really handy actually if you if you want to get a nice side-by-side -side view of what you've drawn so far. Now here's the flicker button. Flicker is a really handy option if you don't want to constantly be adjusting your opacity. Because if you press the flicker button, I'm just going to tap it there real quick, you can see on the screen that it's fading in and out and you're able to see your hand underneath it. So say you were drawing and then you'd be able to, to see what you actually had. Now this might be way too fast. It's a little too fast for me. So I can actually make it longer. So it'll fade in and out nice and slow, and you're not gonna be moving to adjust that opacity bar quite a bit. So I'm gonna turn that off for now though. And then finally, you got the share my work in progress button, which is really handy if you just wanna take a nice picture of what you've drawn so far. So if you press on that one, it takes a screenshot of the image you've got underneath, and watch out, because your hand might get in there, so you might have to do some finagling, moving around a little bit. But then you can just send it to yourself, save it to your photos, or send it to a friend. So let's say I'm going to start to draw. Now what you want to do is take out your, your utensil, your pencil, pen, charcoal, whatever you're using. And then... Okay, and we're back. So I've done a bit of drawing on this image, and if we want to use those features we learned about earlier, let's press the bottom right button with the arrow on it, and then we're going to go to the vertical slider, and you can see the difference. That is how it looks. And that's a pretty cool feature, especially when you're finished and you're able to go back over it and see what you've done. 
So there's a ton of different ways for you to be able to mess around with this, whether it be through using different filters on the image or using different features within the app. And so instead of just sitting here listening to me talking, go check it out. It's got a lot of cool features for you to see.